Hello YouTube friends, Sasonic here, thanks for tuning in. Please don't forget to thumbs up this video before you leave. So if you're watching this upload, you're either in the freshwater aquarium hobby and keeping cichlids, or you're thinking about stocking cichlids and are wanting to learn more about them, or you're doing general research on entering into the aquarium hobby. I'm predicting one of those things apply to you, or maybe something else is drawing you in to watch. In any event, welcome. I wanna talk about the two major types of cichlids, African versus American. I'm not the world's authority on this subject, but I have kept both types for more than a few years now, and I've done my share of research online on YouTube, in chat forums, and anywhere else I could gather information. So I'll share my thoughts on this topic and display a lot of video as a backdrop while I speak. We'll talk about water conditions, compare different types of cichlids visually, and talk about their personalities, and contrast how they are as pets. There's some video playing from my tanks right now, and later there'll be some from nearby tropical fish stores, which I'll give credit to when I get there. I don't like to pirate images or any type of material without giving credit. I just don't feel that's ethical. I always ask permission or at least put the person's name on it. I'm gonna start with my early experiences mixing cichlids and then talk about the differences in keeping both kinds and give some personal thoughts. About three years ago when I was a rookie, I started off combining both American and African cichlids, which in most experts' opinion is a no-no. I no longer do it or recommend it, but I will be honest and reveal I didn't experience any trouble in, in mixing different kinds of cichlids. It was smooth sailing, keeping a 65-gallon tank at 78 degrees with a pH of 7.8 and doing 30% water changes every 10 days. And that's with two marine land, hang on the back, 220 filters providing the filtration. You can see the setup playing here in the background when I had that assortment of cichlids. Although this worked out for me, again, I would not recommend mixing African and American cichlids. And even if you hint that you want to do that in a fish forum or even here on YouTube, you can rest assured some keyboard warriors will respond with abuse and call you an idiot and maybe worse. By the way, keep in mind American cichlids doesn't mean cichlids that were indigenous to the United States. When somebody says American cichlids, it's actually referring to the Americas, which includes all of North, Central, and South America, and not just the United States of America. Let me shift to this. A lot of fish keepers try to prove compatibility charts wrong. I've learned not to challenge what's already been tested and established. I got away with jumbling different types of cichlids together for a while in the same tank, but trust me, do not attempt to re reinvent the wheel here and, and just adhere to what's been proven. I've seen people on YouTube swear that beta fish can be community fish and they know how to make it work, but believe me, all that banter can only work short term. When that person's project fails after six months or perhaps a bit longer, you won't hear the declarations from him or her again. So even though I successfully mixed cichlids from different continents, it's not the right thing to do because the fish may not get along and eventually problems will creep in and it could get messy in your tank or perhaps fatal. Also, the pH requirements for different cichlids do matter somewhat. Not as much as some people try to nitpick, but generally you should try to have the pH level around 8.2 if possible with your Africans and you can have a pH somewhere from 7 to 8 with American cichlids. pH levels can be a major topic for debate in this hobby, so let me just get into it for a few moments. Hopefully my opinions won't offend any know-it-alls in the hobby, and believe me, those types of hobbies are out there in abundance. The pH level in my 135 gallon is around 8.4 thanks to the Sarayu stones. Or maybe it's pronounced Sarayu stones, I'm not sure how to say it. Anyway, that raises the pH up to 8.4, which is a great level in an African cichlid tank. I will firmly state, however, that African cichlids have done fine for me in my 90-gallon tank with a pH of 7.8. They are all healthy, active, and show good color. And the ultimate proof is that most of my fry that are born have survived in my smaller tanks with a pH of 7.8. The last few times, it's been 100% of them, 30 of 30 in some cases. So if a pH of 7.8 were too low, tiny fish who don't have their immune system fully developed and their overall constitution isn't formed yet, wouldn't have survived for me. So I don't agree that a pH level must be higher than 8.0 for African cichlids. It's just not true, at least not in the strains of cichlids that I raise here in Southern California. For those pH obsessed people in the hobby, forgive me if I just don't believe that if the pH were 8.3 in my 90 gallon tank instead of 7.8, that something magical would happen and everything would improve and, and, and it would make some glorious you know, change. 
My fish are fine in the 90 gallon. I mean, more than fine, don't you think? They're on screen right now. And that's with a pH of 7.8. They're fine, the videos don't lie. So try to get the pH to around 8.0, but if you're a bit below that, that doesn't disqualify you from keeping African cichlids. Trust me on that. Don't listen to the online bullies and pH obsessed blockheads in the hobby because they go too far in their line of reasoning. That was a bit of a rant, but pH is a heated topic with cichlids, and if I've angered anyone, too bad, because I can support my claims with the projects that you see in this video. So let's segue now to temperature. The temperature for both types of cichlids is very comparable. They all thrive between 76 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You could go slightly higher with the Africans and perhaps a bit cooler with the Americans. But I would say the magic number to be worry-free for both would be 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And some of the smaller heaters are preset to 78 degrees and can't even be altered. And many of those come in the ready set aquariums that have all the accessories already in the box when you purchase them. There is some evidence that African cichlid fry grow faster with temperatures closer to 85 degrees Fahrenheit and the overall metabolism for them at any age increases. And I've read higher temperatures can also make them more aggressive. Just stick to the benchmark numbers, high 70s for Americans and low 80s for Africans. But keep an eye on your temperature every once in a while. Some thermometers go bad. And when you're doing water changes, you may be, like the way I do, unplugging the thermometers. I'm sorry, the, the heaters because the water level can go down below them. And there are times that you may forget to plug them back in. So frequently check your temps. So let's talk about some of the visual differences between African cichlids and those from the Americas. Africans tend to be more colorful. You've got the pure and bright yellow of the electric yellows and the incomparable sparkle of the electric blue cichlids. And there's also the cobalt blue variety. And then you've got the orange blotch cichlids, which are a glamorous blend of blues, oranges, and traces of red, yellow, and even teal. And don't forget the astonishing breeds such as the Taiwan reefs. American cichlids can also be quite beautiful, but they don't normally have the eye-popping colors that one sees with the Africans. There are exceptions, green terrors, jewels, flower horns, and electric blue jack Dempseys are some of the others that can really dazzle you with their color, but I do think the Africans have the edge in this department because mainly there's more varieties and you just see them widely available in stores. And so many of them are a mix of beautiful colors that in some cases come from crossbreeding in the aquarium hobby. When you have a beautiful OB, like my all-time favorite diamond, who's on screen right here, I don't think there's an American cichlid that can compare. Of course, opinions may vary though. One other aspect to consider is that with most Africans in the hobby, the shape of the fish is universally quite similar. The only modest differences are maybe in head shape, a blue dolphin, for example, and maybe overall size, you know, a Venustis or a living stone eye tend to be larger than your typical peacocks, you know, OBs and whatnot. And there's also the slenderness of an electric blue Johanny or Johanny, I'm not sure how that's said. One of those is on screen right now. But the fish are mostly of a matching stature. There may be some variation out there. I've just not seen it at the tropical fish stores or in videos. On the other hand, American cichlids can give your tank rich variety in both color and body shape. This right here is Jailbreak, a black convict in my 65 gallon tank. He has a very different body type than say a Jack Dempsey, which you see right here, or a flower horn, which is on screen right now, or an Oscar, which is pictured right here. Those last three videos, by the way, are courtesy of Tong's Tropical Fish in Orange County. See, I told you I don't steal images. You've also got the unique body shape of a green terror. And if you choose to include a blood parrot in the American cichlids category, then you've got a chubby teddy bear of a fish with a shape that's either cute and cuddly or awkward and abominable, depending on where you stand with respect to the blood parrot's place in the hobby. That's something that can touch a nerve and become a hot topic with people. I'm personally a blood parrot fan. I don't want to elaborate too much about that though in this video. I've got plenty of videos on parrots. With respect to keeping Africans slash Americans, there's clearly a different tone to the tank. In a heavily stocked African tank, you could potentially see an abundance of radiating colors with variety and visual stimulation everywhere you look. That's the idea here with my 135 gallon tank, which I work hard to maintain as a display tank so the fish can look 
at their best. With Africans, you will have an alpha male tank boss and maybe two or so fish that are almost like vice presidents, which also chase the less prominent fish in the tank. But mainly your tank boss will do most of the chasing and clearly show with his swim patterns and behavior that he's in charge. And he will rarely be challenged until he's overthrown, which probably will happen after a while. There are occasions when a female takes over, though I've only seen it once in my tanks, but it can happen. I've witnessed it. In your American cichlid tanks, the tank boss doesn't quite behave the same as with Africans from what I've seen. Your boss fish will take charge when it needs to, but I don't believe you'll see a constant back and forth swim pattern patrolling the tank like you see with the Africans. Your Americans will also be more interested in hanging out in caves. Mine seem to love them, whereas the Africans for the most part have ignored caves with the exception of my electric yellows and Dimasoni, which do hang out in caves a bit. Also, I think with American cichlids, it's more about the individual. Say you have a 90 gallon tank with two Oscars, an electric blue jack Dempsey and a couple of green terrors, for example. Each fish will seem a little more personable than your typical African cichlid tank which will likely house many more fish and you won't single them out or observe each one quite as much. And with the length and bulk that your Americans will have, you may appreciate the larger animal more and perhaps even bond with it more. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of individuality with Africans, especially when compared to community fish or, or robot-like schooling fish, which are all identical. I'm just saying American cichlids will probably prove to be more captivating pets, in my opinion. They will respond to their owners maybe on a more personal level, and that's something that I've experienced a lot, especially with my favorite fish, Fireball, who is a blood parrot. With breeding differences, you will see some berserk moments with American cichlids. When the mother chooses a smooth surface to lay her eggs, she and the father will both fiercely guard the area and maybe even threaten fish and drive them to the opposite side of the tank and stress them out and that can cause a lot of problems. You then have to decide what to do with the rock or surface that has the eggs on it. If you think the eggs have been fertilized or witnessed it happening, the best choice is often to put them in a safer tank to hatch. Once fertilized, the eggs will hatch and the and the fry could be in danger in the original tank if you keep them in there. Danger from both the fish, eating them of course, and maybe your filter sucking them in. So you can alleviate the latter issue with a sponge cover on your, on your filter intake, but then you've got the issue of will the fry be safe. It's a bit easier to control the situation with Africans. They don't drop their eggs to be fertilized. By contrast, they instinctively keep them in their mouth, a phenomenon known as mouth brooding. They'll drop the eggs just for a moment as the male fertilizes or they may not drop them at all. With Africans, I normally just wait till the female is holding. She will look as if her lips are and throat are both swollen. Her throat will droop and then she won't eat during this time. I give it about 15 days for the eggs to be fertilized and then at that time, remove her, put her in another smaller tank with the same temperature and comparable pH and all of your fry will have a good chance to live grow up and, and then when they take on enough size, they can be put in, in your larger tanks when they're mature enough. So if you're trying to decide which way to go with respect to cichlids, African or American, I would advise you to take your time, watch more videos and visit tropical fish stores and plan out how you're going to decorate and stock your tank. Be patient, do the research, or I promise you, are, you will surely regret it because rushing leads to mistakes in this hobby. Later on, you can be like me and obsess and spend a lot of money on several tanks and turn your garage into a fish room so you won't have to decide what types of fish to keep. You can stock different types and different tanks and different rooms, but not everybody is as liberal with their spending in this hobby as I am. And in some cases, adequate space in your home, condo or apartment may not be available. But now that I have several tanks, I'll share this. I can't imagine having just one. When you develop skills, experience, or some kind of talent, you want to maximize those att attributes, you know? A great guitar player probably doesn't own just one guitar, or a great athlete probably has more than one pair of gym shoes, etc., etc. You get the idea. So that wraps things up in this upload. Please subscribe and like and give me your thoughts below. I always check for comments every time I sit at my computer, and I like responding, so please don't be shy. I always read them, and I will respond to to any and every question. So thanks for watching and check out my fish tank playlist. There's a lot of content on here and I'll be back.
with more soon.